The Human Rights Council has just finished its uh, 17th session, which ran, ran over the past three weeks, and it's been a very successful session, just like the one in March. The highlights by far of this session was a landmark resolution on human rights, sexual orientation and gender identity. This is the first time in the history of the United Nations that the human rights body actually explicitly addresses sexual orientation and gender identity. And this is important because violence and discrimination against persons based on their real or perceived sexual orientation and gender identity is widespread around the world. And therefore it's very important that the Human Rights Council takes this issue seriously and, and, and puts this on its agenda. Unfortunately, we've continued to see several states, particularly from the African group and the OIC, the Organization of the Islamic Conference, express their uh, objections to considering, to at least consider this issue within the Human Rights Council. But the resolution was presented by South Africa. South Africa played a leadership role on this, which is very commendable, particularly against many of its peer African nations, therefore demystifying the idea that issues around sexual orientation and gender identity are a purely Western idea. The recent months have shown a Human Rights Council that was increasingly willing to address the ongoing situation in, in several countries around the world, particularly in the Middle East and North African region, but also in Côte d'Ivoire. So at this past session we've seen dedicated debates of council members and civil society about the situations in Côte d'Ivoire, in Libya, in Syria and just the fact that these debates have happened and have taken place in a very substantive manner is, is significant in itself. At the same time, the Human Rights Council has also followed up to these situations by extending the mandate of the Commission of Inquiry on Libya and by creating a new independent expert which will follow up to the Commission of Inquiry on Côte d'Ivoire. The mandate of this expert could have been stronger, but the fact that the Human Rights Council, with the support of the Côte d'Ivoire, the state concerned, has taken this decision is significant. The Human Rights Council has also adopted a short procedural decision on Yemen, inviting the High Commissioner to present her report uh, of her visit to Yemen, and that will be an important opportunity for human rights defenders to bring their views and their stories to the Council and to ensure that this situation remains on the agenda of the main human rights body. Well, unfortunately, the Human Rights Council continues to display signs of double standards and selectivity in that it has not addressed several situations where the human rights situation continues to deteriorate and where the Human Rights Council has taken no action. The most striking examples in this regard are probably uh, the situation in Bahrain, where the Council has not engaged and has not taken any, any action, and the situation in Sri Lanka, where human rights defenders uh, continue to operate in a very difficult and dangerous uh, climate. However, the Council has also uh, tried out a new and innovative uh, tool by adopting a procedural decision to hold a panel discussion, a thematic panel discussion on the promotion and protection of human rights in the context of peaceful protests. That will take place in September and it will be an opportunity for human rights defenders in those places that have so far not enjoyed the attention of the Human Rights Council to bring their stories to the Council and lobby for a, a response by the international community. Unfortunately, there have been no developments on the issue of reprisals against those who cooperate with the UN human rights mechanisms. There were several opportunities at this session to continue to strengthen the Council's response to this, including by asking some of the Human Rights Council's experts to pay specific attention and by calling on states to report on the investigations that they have undertaken into cases of reprisals. That opportunity was missed, but again the next session in September will be a chance for all states in the Council to take their responsibility seriously and protect individuals and groups that cooperate with the mechanisms of the Council and thereby allow it to, to carry out its work.